explain as we go on why I put this diagram. Amen. Because you, you really need to understand the kingdom. If you don't understand the kingdom, you can't apply it. You see, and I'm going to show you how everything we've talked about fits together very simply. Amen. Very, very simply. You, the, the Bible says the enemy <coughs> will steal the word if you don't comprehend it. Of course. And, and if you read Matthew, the word he wants to steal is the word about the kingdom. Amen. Because if you get everything else, it can be taken away. But if you get the kingdom, you have the infinite resource. Yes. So, so why get the resource when you get the source? The kingdom is the source. So I can get healed, but I'll, I can get sick again. But if I have the kingdom, I will always have the healer with me. Amen. You see? So it's very important to understand the kingdom, to grasp the importance of the kingdom, and be able to apply the kingdom, or the enemy will steal it. You just don't see its value. You don't realize it's the precious pearl. Amen. Amen? So we're going to put Thanksgiving in light of the kingdom, because in truth, that's really what we're thankful about. Because the only way you get along with the king is to what? Obey his laws. Law. Hallelujah. Law is the glue that binds the king and his subjects. Perfect. A kingdom is composed of four elements. There's four elements in a kingdom. There is the king. king. Mm -hmm. He's the number one central component. A king is nothing without a territory. Everything is happening in his territory. He owns everything in his territory. In fact, the king, we're talking about God, has created everything. So everything is his. And a kingdom and a territory, the territory is called the king's domain, the kingdom. And in the territory, there are subjects or citizens. And they are subject to the law of the king. So without the law, there is no negotiation between the king and the people because the law is his will. And the law is double-edged. It's like a sword. If you obey the law, you get blessed. If you disobey the law, you get punished. There are consequences for breaking the law. Sin is simply lawlessness. Without law, there's no order. Whenever there's disorder in your life, it's because you're violating a law. When you understand that the king of the universe has constructed everything to laws, you understand why David said, I love your law, and I meditate. I thirst for your precepts and your laws and your commands. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring my soul. Perfect. When you understand laws, there's no more experimentation. Perfect. When you understand laws, success is predictable and failure is predictable. When you understand laws, you get bold. Mm -hmm. And laws are the keys to the kingdom. Because if you obey the law, it unlocks the king's favor to give you everything in the territory that you need. Right. The keys to the kingdom are the knowledge of the law. laws. Because everything operates by law. law. No country, Canada, I don't care, Jerusalem, U.S., Brazil, no country is a country without what? Laws. Perfect. Laws. They keep the standard. Why do we like Canada? We like the laws. <laughs> Why do we like the kingdom? We like the laws. Paul said, I love the law. The law is amazing. The law is good. Perfect. Mm. I just can't keep the law. Perfect. <laughs> That's why we have the mediator of God's will or law. Because yeah. the mediator can keep it. Yeah. While we were yet in weakness, powerless to help ourselves, at the fitting time, Christ died for in behalf of the ungodly. Mm. Now, powerless to help ourselves, how? Powerless to keep the law. Yeah. If you, a king will always run his country through his laws. Yes. When you cannot, every country is looking for law-abiding ones. Citizens. 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 The problem with God and man, the problem that Adam had was that he broke what? The law. The law. Yes. The law was the problem. God said, okay, Adam, you're in the garden. 
Oh, by the way, you want to get along with me? I need to give you a law. Fourth law. Don't eat that fruit. Amen. Or you'll die. <laughs> Don't eat that fruit or you'll die. And God repeated that law in Ezekiel. He goes, all souls that sin will die. <laughs> you'll die not because God is evil. Because built into the law is natural consequences when you break it. If, if you worry all the time, you'll get high blood pressure. Yeah. It's the consequence of breaking the law. You have peaceful thoughts, no high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. It's the natural consequence of obeying the law. Everything functions by law. The, the biggest problem that God has with man is law. That's why righteousness is the study of obedience to law in God's kingdom. It is the key to the kingdom. So we were weak. We were powerless to help. Satan had infected Adam. And for generations, Satan, the power of iniquity, the power of lawlessness, breaking the law, malfunctioning, self-destructing. Once you self-destruct, you are breaking the law. The laws are designed to promote life, preserve life, enhance life, guard life. If you fight the laws, you're fighting life. Yeah. The laws are meant to guard and promote life. And part of life is love. In fact, God is love. That's why his law is love, because the, the, the law is just an extension of the king's nature. Mm -hmm. But all the laws are built around what? Love. Right. Love. When Adam broke that law, God separated. Because law is the glue that binds what? The subjects and the king. Once he broke the law, he had to separate. God is holy. You become defiled. I must step up. Right from you. While we're yet powerless to, at the fitting time, Christ died from behalf of the God. So at the fitting time, so so remember when 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 Noah, Noah's time, remember this in Genesis. God looked upon the earth and he said, the, the imagination of every man is so evil. Because man is completely evil. There's only one righteous man. There's only one man who's at law abiding by faith. That's Noah. And because every man was so evil and was suffering the natural consequences of their evil, they were just destroying themselves and destroying others and destroying the planet. They were just full of destruction. They were just disobeying all the laws and the natural consequences were kicking in. God says, before all the natural consequences kick in, I'm going to intervene and destroy it all. Because it's going to happen anyways and it's a disgrace. It's like you don't ever start something in such a mess that you just scrap it. Perfect. That was what God did. So, again, man was approaching this point. The fitting time was this. The souls were getting completely polluted again by what? Sin, lawlessness. The force of iniquity was overtaking the territory. Not the outside territory. I'm talking the inside territory and then the outside territory. The inside territory is the soul. So iniquity, lawlessness was overcoming the soul. People were becoming rebellious and crazy. Starting to destroy themselves and others. And, the, and of course, the earth. So God, so, so at the fitting time, says, okay, no, I don't want to repeat the same thing I did with Noah's time, even though they're breaking the law. So Christ had to come at that point to bring relief, to bring restoration, to bring redemption. And when you understand in terms of this, you'll understand exactly what Christ did. You know exactly how to position yourself to get favor in the kingdom, which is obedience to law. Amen. Righteousness. Now it goes like this. And goes, now it is an extraordinary thing for one to give his life, even for an upright man. Though perhaps for a noble and a lovable and generous benefactor, someone might even dare to die. Mm -hmm. But God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that we were still sinners. Christ the Messiah, the anointed one, died for us. So you have to understand something. When we broke away from God's law and we were defiled, everyone was going, even the angels are going, how is man ever going to come back? In fact, the, the demons are going, man can never come back. He's broken the law. He's defiled. He can't keep the law. And Nick was overpowering him. How can God bring man back to law? You see? So, so, but God in his great love. So God's motive in doing everything was love. And, 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 and how do you know it's pure love? Because there was nothing extraordinary about this. He'd become defiled, corrupted. Yeah, yeah. There was nothing upright about us. You see, there's nothing noble about us. There's nothing lovable, generous, 
or we, 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 we didn't obey any of the laws that make us special. We were breaking the laws, destroying our potential. See, we were still sinners. But God in His great love said, it doesn't matter what you have done or what you have become. Because of my love, pure grace, pure love, I will extend myself. I still see the potential in you and I will restore the potential and I'll show you how. And let's look at it in verse 9. It goes, Therefore, since we are now justified, acquitted, made righteous, and brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood, how much more certain is it that we shall be saved by Him from the indignation and wrath of God? So everyone was up for what? Wrath. God was going to destroy all the things that couldn't obey what law? Because they're going to self-destruct what? Anyways. He goes, therefore, since we're now justified, acquitted, made righteous, and brought into right relationship by Christ's blood. The problem is, how can a holy, righteous, law-abiding, is the law himself, get along with lawless, unholy people? This is the problem. So God said, I will solve the problem by the precious blood of my son. Because the blood allows you and God to get back together. Outside of the blood, you and God cannot connect. Why? Because the blood satisfies the requirement of the penalty of the law. Law brought God and Adam together. Law separated them. And the remedy for the law when it was broken was the blood. The blood has the power to atone all your sin. Is it because you have become obedient law abiding citizen? No, not yet. The blood atoned for your disobedience to the king. Yes. Correct. Yeah, it's very clear when you approach him or you approach him. No, but I'm so obedient. He's like, what are you talking about? Yep. You better put out that blood coat. That's why it's called pure love, pure grace. Yes. There's two parts to the law. Breaking the law and obeying the law. The blood wipes away all your record of breaking the law. But you still have to what? Obey the law. And that's where the spirit comes in. The law is remedied, restored by the blood and the spirit. So above the law, you can see the blood. Below the law, you can see the spirit. It takes care of the two aspects of what? The law. God's laws are eternal. They will never change. It's how the universe functions. You ain't going to change it. They're inbuilt. Amen. You, your only hope is to obey it. But we have become so powerless, so weak, so defiled. We cannot keep the law. You can't love at all times in your human effort, in your defiled state, in the flesh state. You can't give thanks out. You can't forgive. You can't stay in peace. You can't do the, you can't do the good. It's impossible. <laughs> The, the, you will never be humble till you realize you can't keep the law and you must keep the law unless you want to be unsuccessful and ineffective and a loser. Anybody suffering is simply violating laws. Now, why is he violating these laws? Because the lawless one has what? Infected them. God is not into rebels. Rebels simply <laughs> destroy the law and they're destroying themselves and destroying everything. God wants nice, obedient, law-abiding citizens. Amen. Amen? I'm excited to study. I'm obsessed with studying the law. I don't know. It, it ignites my passion. Principles, laws. I'm always uh, calling Pastor Fraser and asking him about one question. Can you explain the laws to me? Amen. Can you explain the principles to me? They're the keys that unlock all the things of the kingdom. The blood is a precious key. And that's why we give thanks. Because without the blood, we could never get back together with yeah. God. And that'd be a good citizen or beneficial citizen. Mm -hmm. You see, so Christ, so now the blood represents his life. His life that was slain. He was the unblemished lamb. He had to be sinless because he had to take the place of all our sin. So, so God treated God restored us back to the law by treating Christ as if he broke all the laws. Perfect. And then turning around and treating us as if we Christ. never broke any uh, laws, uh, even though we had broken the laws. It's called righteousness by faith. Amen. He has put it in your account. So, so we racked up all these bills because of sin. We have to pay. And we put it all on Christ's 
credit card. Amen. And he had to pay. In fact, the Bible says he took all God's wrath and indignation for sin. God has to punish the sinner for his sin. But if he punished us, we would have been dead. So he said, I will send myself to do it. I have to send myself as a man, because man, sin man, has to pay the penalty. And I have to come as a God and man, because only God is sinless. He, only he can obey all the law. So because Christ is the God-man, he was the perfect lamb, the perfect atonement, so that you and God could once more what? Connect. In the desert, when God wanted to connect back with man, he erected the tabernacle. And in the tabernacle, what did they do? They sacrificed the blood of animals. Without blood, there's no remission of sin. There's no payment for sin. There's no satisfaction of the penalty of the law, so you and God cannot get back together. How much more so the precious blood of Jesus that has the power to eternally wipe away all sin. No more sacrifice. That's the ceremonial law. The ceremonial law is gone because Christ is a one-time sacrifice. But the, the laws of life, the law of the Spirit still holds. You still have to honor your mother and father. You can't kill. You can't steal. You can't covet. You can't worship false gods. Those laws still hold. Those guarantee your effective functioning and the benefits of the king giving you all his favor. Mm -hmm. And because we can't keep them, look at the mercy of God just to get a pure love. He goes, you can never obey the law. You are so defiled. Guess what? I'm going to pay for you. I'm going to give a payment where it doesn't matter how many times you break the law. You're free from the penalty. When you go to a courtroom and you've committed a crime, the judge has the power to go, okay, Nadine, you stole. You stole. I could punish you. I'm going to release leniency. Mercy! You're off. This is what Christ did with the prostitute. He said, go, you're free. And sin no more. Amen. Go, you're free. But you're going to obey the law. You're not free to do evil. You're not free to break the law. You're free to obey the law. Mm -hmm. How will you obey the law? In verse 10, it goes, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, it is much more certain now that we are reconciled. Amen? Join back in covenant. That we shall be saved, daily delivered from sin's dominion through his resurrection life. There's resurrection power to obey. Go, you're free by the blood of Jesus. Now go and sin no more. Obey the law through resurrection power. Faith is your access to resurrection power to be righteous, to obey the law, to be blessed outrageously. Christ simply walked in obedience to all the laws. And look at all that he could do. There was no man like Christ. And his spirit lives in you now. And his blood wants to clean you now. I don't know what you thank you. Amen. Thank you. Because if you do not, if you break laws, you suffer. And if you don't obey laws, you'll never be blessed. That's double suffering. Not only a suffering, I have no chance of being blessed. That's a life of ineffectiveness, a life of futility, a life of loss, a life of frustration. Because you can't obey laws. I, I can't organize my desk. I can't concentrate. I can't pay my bills. I can't take care of my body. I can't take care of my mind. I can't take care of my children. I break all the laws. All of man's suffering is because you can't obey laws. I don't mean like ceremony. I don't mean like light the candle, you know, put the show bread on. You know? I mean like love. I mean like moral laws, spiritual laws. Hallelujah. All God's laws are based on a fundamental law called faith. Faith accesses all the ability to do all the other laws. That's why in the kingdom you must be an expert at faith. Because our righteousness, our obedience to the law, and our nullification of the law's penalty is by what? Faith. Faith in the blood, faith in the spirit. This takes care of the double-edged sword of what? The law. Therefore, so when God looks at, at Pastor Fraser now, he goes, I see the blood. I don't have to destroy you. Amazing. No record. I see through the blood goggles. Oh, I see the spirit in you. All potential to do good, to obey the law. You are righteous. Perfect. Amen. Righteous, I think. think of it this way. You are rightly set up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remember why it, why it has to be by faith. If you're, 
if you don't get faith, then you can't receive the blood to clean away your sins. So when God looks at you, he's still seeing you as sin instead of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're not righteous by nothing you're doing. None of us can obey the law ever who have been contaminated by sin. Mm -hmm. So God realized this. It, it's brilliant what he did. Pastor Chow was right. So he said, okay. I'm going to give you the blood to fix your sin in problem. You're breaking the law all the time. So you're constant an enemy of me. So this will stop you being an enemy. He go, but that doesn't change who I am in my law. I still need you to be a law-abiding citizen. Right. So I need you to have more faith now. It's okay, you receive the blood and it gets clean. I want you to have faith now to receive my resurrected spirit to make you a law-abiding citizen so you're operating in my favor. It has to be by faith because of this. That your cleanliness is not you. And your ability to obey the law is not you. It's his spirit. <laughs> exactly. So you understand? So faith is the right setup to give you the righteousness or the requirement of the right spirit, Christ spirit, that can obey the law. And the atonement for all your craziness you have done, you'll continue to do, and so forth. When that happens, this is why it says by faith, you are now set up. Right now, look at you. Beautiful. There's no sin in God. The blood is there. Yes. And the spirit is bringing you consistently into perpetual righteousness. Perfect. That becomes the game. Yes. When, because of Christ's substitution for you, when he looks at the cross, he sees you. And when he looks at you, he sees his son. And his son is the blood that was shed to atone for the law. And the spirit that can what? Keep the law. Perfect. Laws are good. Laws are amazing. When you study them, you understand, wow, your design is perfect. There are billions of planets, right? None of them collide. Why? Because of what? Perfect laws. The, you, there's billions and billions of stars, and none of them crash. Silent like a Swiss watch. Amazing. How do you do it? Laws. Laws of gravitation. Wow. That's amazing to me. Everything has an inbuilt principle. Are you going against it? Hallelujah. You know, I don't know about you. When you understand law, you watch yourself and you go, I can't trust my mind and my flesh. It's always breaking the law. Yeah. It's always abusing the body. Always stuffing the soul. You can't put... If I fill my soul with negative thoughts and feelings, what do you think will come out of it perfect? We put the wrong gasoline in the car and then we expect it to drive. Who has the problem? Well, we have the problem, but we don't acknowledge the fact that we have something in us that's lawless. Paul understood this. He goes, the law is good, but I have something in me that always breaks the law, and I'm baffled. I don't know why. The harder I try, the worse it gets. <laughs> because the lawlessness, it's in me. It hides in you. And the minute you decide to break the law, it says, nope, nope. That's why I'm going to pray. Nope. I I'm going to fast today. Nope. I'm going to die. Eat. I'm going to not smoke. Smoke. Yeah. <laughs> it's always getting you to break the law. I'm going to forget Pastor Fraser. You're a jerk. <laughs> it's breaking the law. I will keep the command of love. I will love God with all my heart. Oh, Wendy's hamburgers. You know, it's always breaking the law. You see? And if you break the law, you cannot connect with God. Except Thank you for the blood. Amen. The precious blood. The only thing. So, you ever love someone, but, but you can't touch them? Like they're far away, or they're in front of you. I just wish I could put my arms around you. You know what I mean? It's like, like a little child. You want to hug your child. You know, you know in wartime, people are separate. You just want to hug their child. God's like, I can't hug you. I can't draw near to you. Because you're filthy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got AIDS, and it's contagious, and I'm healthy. So God said, I have a cleaning agent. It's called the blood. The blood takes away the symptoms. So now I can touch you without getting what? Infected. Perfect. But I don't just want to take away the symptoms. If I get close to you through the blood of Jesus, I will inject you with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the cure. It's the cure. You know, you know when they operate and, and the person is bleeding and there's a suction that removes all the blood? That's like the blood. It removes all the, the stuff. And then you can operate. Get it. Amen. Hallelujah. You see? So with, with the blood, God can come around you. 
This is the, the, this is the blood of animals. But how much, but the precious blood of Jesus, it has the power to penetrate in you. Because the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is one reason. The blood of Jesus that allows the Spirit to what? Come in. We were losing the fight because we had iniquity in us, but God was outside of us. But now in the New Testament, through the blood, now God is inside of us, and his presence can be what? Outside of us. And the iniquity is trapped in between, getting squeezed up. We stay in the presence. We keep resurrecting the spirit. The blood keeps cleaning their symptoms. And the disease is pushed what? Out. We become perfect, law-abiding. We become machines of effectiveness and blessing. Hallelujah. We have the authority. Authority to command the power of the blood. By his wounds and stripes, you are healed. Amen. When you abide by the law, God says, you can do what you want. You can do what you want, because I know you'll do what I want. My spirit is in there. Yes. When you see someone walking, and like they're shining, and everything is, is, is amazing in their life, one reason, they have a spirit that forces them to obey what? Amen. Pastor Fraser doesn't have a choice. Amen. The Spirit tells him when to eat, how much to eat, when to sleep, how much to sleep. It regulates everything according to what? Amen. Law. Like a fine-tuned thoroughbred, ready to gallop. At all. You're a machine for the Lord. You're an instrument set apart by the blood, filled with the Spirit. Getting the full favor of what? The Lord. Amen. Look at my son in whom I am well pleased. He obeys all my laws. He never sins. Amazing. You get everything. Everything is yours. All power and authority is yours. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Do you want the keys to the kingdom? Do you want the secrets to the kingdom? Hallelujah. What have we been learning? Obedience Amen. is a key. If you obey me, you'll be my friend. Amen. <laughs> I don't know about you, you need God to be your friend. He might destroy you because you're already destroying yourself. You need to God. You obey me, you'll be my friend. Obey me, you'll live out in my love. You obey me, you have lasting truth. Obey me, I'll reveal everything. I'll show you that. I'll show you how it all works. And when you show that, you're like, oh, I, your design is perfect. God made everything good. I'll say it another way. God made everything according to good laws. Amen. Going to good laws. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you catching the fever for the kingdom? Amen. Amen. So are you understanding the elements of a kingdom? Do you understand righteousness is the relationship between the king, his laws, and the citizens or subjects in the territory? Now, Satan is very, very, very clever, very good. He misinterprets the law, he attempts you to break the law. Hallelujah. Why? Because you will be ineffective in taking over the territory. In fact, he will take over the territory.